Hey, everybody, it's Conscious Medium Brandon Ross, and welcome back to Stream of Consciousness. And today's guest is going to talk to us about how food matters. She's come up with a great Oracle deck about food, nutrition, and it's a new way to take a look at things consciously and intuitively on the next Stream of Consciousness. And may I say, darling, you look super handsome today. Well, I'm glad I'm recovered. Thank you. Taking a look at the chart right now, this would be a really good time for Putin to swallow some crow. And if it. All right, Lainey, how are you? I am excellent, and I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for this invitation. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get down and talk with you and all your people here. <laughs> we, well, listen, we have a fun story to share. We'll, we'll backload it a little bit, but um, talk to me about what goes on. For, first of all, I'd love to talk about the process and kind of how things came to be. Can you talk a little bit about like why did you feel it was so important to focus in on food and how it connects with the spirituality of things? How long is your show? Because <laughs> that, I tell you, that is a big question. But what I could tell you mm -hmm. is that Spirit somehow had really looked at my uh, life's work and kind of blended everything into, rolled it into a ball and said, now it's time to do it. But what really had happened is I had been a, uh, I had been a food science nut, a food healer forever. And I had been really working in chef kitchens. I had been working in catering companies. I have been pretty much navigating the food science world forever, been right. a food healer. And then what ended up happening is back in 2009, uh, I was taking another food healing course. And I had I come from a multi-generational uh, family of oracles. Oh. So I've had the spiritual backbone for a very long time and I just was working with my uh we had called her um my partner produce Joanna we had written uh uh done some work on meditation albums we said what are our other passions and this passion of food healing came together and I said well you know what I I'm getting through this course it was a very intense course and then I finished it on 11 11 and I said, okay, I'm of course to you did. Of, of course, course I did. did. <laughs> and I got a good grade in the class, maybe the top level, but it was just this intense class, probably one of the you hardest courses. You show know. off. You know, I have to, I have to say food science and chemistry. I don't know for the food nerds out there, yeah. to take all that in was quite a bit. Cause you know, when you're in the etheric world and staying in sort of that high yeah. vibrational and to and bring in science, there's this bridge. It's just a unique, um, combo yeah. but in any case spirit said 
you have to get this deck out. We want to teach people about how to raise their consciousness, about how they're nourishing their body temple. And I was like, what's the hurry? I've got a million other things going on. But it was like, um, no, do this now. How, yeah, so how, tell me about that call, because that's super interesting to me. Like, we're, I mean, we're always looking for a purpose, right? Like, right. We're, how did that become the loudest thing in, in the room in your head? You know, you're coming out with, with meditation, you know, stuff you're doing and, and you're great. You're doing well with all of that. Yeah, I was a media producer. I was a president yeah. of Hitlistic Chamber of Commerce. I was doing lots of things. But then when I sat in, in to answer your question, it was other things weren't lining up. And I get, just kept feeling like things were starting to pull away. And I just kept saying, no, focus on this. And I would hear it. Little did we know in 2019 when the deck was created that when we came into 2020, we said, how are we going to do this? And Spirit said, you're going to raise money and get it out there. And we did a Kickstarter yeah. exactly when COVID was hitting. And at that time, February, March of 2020, people were in the middle of panic. And I said, okay, every day I'm going to post something. Well, what do the people want? They're scared. They wanted protection. And so garlic, we started to basically just post foods that were actually speaking to what was happening in the world. And you know, really the rest is history because it just goes on from there. But it know, was that was it. <laughs> it's it's interesting too, the parallels. And this is one of the things that I, I've really enjoyed meeting so many other people around the world, how many parallels there have been. When I hit, you know, when when I hit the the panic, uh the the pandemic, the panic, same thing. Same thing, um, right? Yeah, right. I I had a good friend of mine, have a good friend of mine who is an herbalist. And we were doing, you know, Facebook live stuff, and he's like, don't don't you know we're not going to be anti anything here but he goes don't fall for all of the stuff they want to fill your body with you have everything you need in your body to fight any of this no matter what the panic is no matter what the conversation is and he was doing live facebook videos about the immune system he was talking about all of the natural boosters for the immune system yeah what we and did. it was funny and we got you know we got buried in the algorithm and you know all that other jazz did you find that during the pandemic that trying to get that this story out about and your product is literally a guidebook for your intuitive health like did you find that that social media was working with you or against you. I mean, I hope you caught lightning in the bottle a little bit, but what I have to say, it's a great question. Um, first, you know, it was, un, un, this was unknown territory to everybody and yeah. we didn't know, but when you follow that intuitive calling in spirit says, just keep, it was like Nemo, uh, just keep Dory, just keep posting, <laughs> just keep posting. So I, I'd post my immunity card, elderberry, ginger feelings how's everybody feeling action our tomato card take action it literally was spirit unfolding a, a roadmap for me and for the people and uh we funded overfunded the decks came out we created more of a deeper teaching to understand what spirit's trying to tell us mother nature's yeah. trying to say and i think it worked i know it worked in our favor because here we are two decks later and uh in 27 countries and it's just turned into a real guide book and a way to understand what spirit's trying to get or how it get our attention through how what we're putting in our bodies it, you know this is probably a pretty good place for us to talk about how we met you know i was down yes. in i was doing i was you know doing my first spirit fest um and it, it's funny because you bring up the elderberry i was at that I was at the final part of my arc. My my foot was really coming back. Like I'd gone through all this stuff, but I had I had this infection. They figured out I was I was suffering from this infection the whole time. And you know, in turn, I, I'm I'm standing there having the conversation with you. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really focused in on my immune system and everything else. And and you can tell the story. Which card did I pull? Well, it, to back up, to add a little bit of flavor. Oh, let's add some flair. Right? You were across from us and you were picking up some elderberry tea. Then you pivoted, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you came back over. We had a hundred, uh, 
I think we had 124 foods because there were two decks there. We were just getting ready to release the second mm -hmm. one. And you had 124 cards you could have picked and you picked elderberry and you just got elderberry like not more than a minute ago across the way. Crazy. So, listen, it's, it's how spirit works. And that, you know, I remember joking around with you. I go, okay, you're the real deal. I guess I can, I guess I can, whatever. And you did say that. You're standing there looking at me. You're like, you're also a medium. So <laughs> you were like, I, really you know, those therapists are amazing. I, I'm just one of my favorite places to see people come up and they yeah. immediately tell you what's going on. And I have so many stories. I have to give you one that I just, is oh, standing. Yeah. yes. Well, I got thousands, but I'll give you one. Mm -hmm. A woman came up to me and she's like, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? And I immediately did see some throat chakra, um, disturbance and I said well I don't know there's maybe a little something going on in your throat chakra and she says oh my god I have a goiter and I said well wow that's very interesting why don't we pull a card to see what's going on she pulls in our new second deck second helpings the bok choy card now bok choy is our truth so that is our, we identify foods as chakras or elements. That is exactly speaking your truth, you know, and it was, that was part of what was going on when there's stuff going on in the throat chakra and she pulls bok choy. I mean, it is the actual food that we have in our, I have in the logo and I get stuff like that all day long. They literally are picking exactly the card. Uh, you know, I, I've seen that in my own, in my own path where, I just connect with people on a regular basis, you know, like I, I, I connect with similar style people like, you know, nurses, therapists, teachers, like are very consistent, like the, the, the light worker brigade, as I call it, like are always showing up for me. And I'm hearing constant stories of like adoption and that sort of thing. And those are validating points for me. Do you mm -hmm. find that you get your validation when you're talking to people like that, when you, you know, it, like the bok choy story and that sort of thing are you seeing it where it's like like subtly you didn't you might not have been able to map it out 100 percent, but when you see it happen in lifetime are you getting validation that all of this work in your path is actually paying off uh immensely yeah. and it never gets old and every day someone shares a, a life-changing story that it gives me presence and reverence to um, realizing it's bigger than me and that what has okay. come through and then it um, is all on point and that this is just sort of like me being a way shower to the next level of wherever this is going and when I'm getting calls from countries far far away saying we want your deck it's telling me that this is this universal ceremonial element food that yeah. binds us all together, that unites us as one, that's provided by the mother, and that somehow this is um, what I was here to do, didn't even know it. I mean, I've done a million things in my life, yeah, but every single thing has come together to create this yeah. like opportunity now of like, okay, people really understand. They want to be these enlightened beings, take all these courses, right? We talk mm -hmm. about all the different modalities. Oh yeah. How do you stay high vibrational? Is you have one body temple, you, let's see how you're going to nurse the soul to sustain it. And now we're getting sort of a, a roadmap on how to do that. I, I think it's really important too. I mean, I, I can appreciate this from one of the other elements of it because I, you know, I teach, I've taught a lot of people over the years yeah. and there's, you know, I call it Merkaba learning. Like you pick up different pieces along the Merkaba yeah. and you might not even know how they fit together yet. But there are almost always elements of like spiritual nature, right? Like, you know, oh, I want to learn, you know, I want to learn how to meditate. I want to connect with my guides. You have that category. And then you have the other category of the, you know, the execution of it. Like, this is how I become a practitioner. These are the things that I'll do, you yeah. know, that sort of thing. And then there's always the self-care line, which is the last one that people go to because it, it gets sullied by Eastern and Western medicine all the time. And it's, uh, it, I mean, I'm not being critical, but you know, understand that where I'm coming from is like people get to that point and they just go, I, I, I've been to acupuncture, I've done yoga, I, I try and eat clean and, and they're not even sure what that means necessarily. Yeah. How much is on the word try? <laughs> yeah. And, and it talked to me. I, the thing I love about these cards is that there's an educational component that just breaks it down so simply. 
So you understand what's going on with your body, why you would choose it. And then, and then it's kind of fun because you're like, I'm going to pull some of these and work with them. Uh, you know, how do people typically use these decks? Like what, what's their, what's their aha moment? And then what's the application? That's a great, you have such good questions. I'm loving every single one. I think that's one of my favorite interviews. I, I'm, uh, re I'm really good at this. I think you've done this once or twice. I'm a Leo rising. So. <laughs> um, what's really nice about this, and it's interesting because we have, and you mentioned medical, we, we do have a lot of nurses and doctors and Western mm. personnel gravitating towards this. And so when you pull the deck, there's eight spreads. It's like any Oracle deck. You can look at food as a character, whether it's a mermaid, a dolphin, a spirit animal. In our case, it's food. But the next mm -hmm. level about this is that these decks provide attunement of what does my body need? What should I be eating? What is going on with my chakra system? Why am I feeling sad? Is it, you know, what is going on emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually? So you can actually pull a card and it'll be a spiritual message uh, like any Oracle deck. But then we provide a practical gift because there's something to be said about that food. Why are you choosing that food? What is it saying to you? And a lot of times people will find that trigger or that aha moment that you speak of sometimes more in the kind of, I would say, you know, everyone usually goes to the spiritual message, but don't leave out the practical gifts, a nutrition, yeah. a fun fact, something about it. And I'll just give you one case in point. I did a presentation and the woman was maybe new to spirituality. She was new to enlightenment and everyone ran, went around, went around the room, easy for me to say. And <laughs> she pulled, she pulled eggplant. It's our shadow card. So she's reading the eggplant. She's reading the message about shadow, which is coming out of the light, looking at the shadowy parts of you so you can heal. And she says, this is my favorite. You hear this a lot. Oh, well, that's interesting. When I hear someone say that's interesting, meaning it really hasn't integrated. So she hands me the book back and I say, and by the way, eggplants are phenomenal artery scrubbers. Suddenly her eyes went bing starts crying and she says i have artery disease i mean it was like don't negate of course, and it's trying to get your attention maybe have some eggplant that night <laughs> wow wow and you know it's uh i'm not even gonna talk about an eggplant emoji we won't go there but it's <laughs> It's funny, though, because it's like you don't even know what you need until you do that deeper dive. And I love I love the educational value yeah. of what this is, because it's like, you know, it's like anything else. I mean, anybody that studies tarot, which we're going to talk about that here in a second. But yeah. when you study tarot, you like you could take a class a, a year on tarot mm -hmm. and work with it and then go back to the basics and be like, I totally didn't even pick up on that the first time. Or I, I this time around, I'm going to focus in on the astrology of it. And I actually, I, I teach a class on the astrology of tarot, which really kind of helps you understand Ooh. the astrological dynamic to it. Oh, I'm interested. Well, and listen, I that's why... I'm, you know, listen, I, I'm not personally bringing you to upstate New York, but I'm going to bring it upstate New York and we're going to hold court here and we're going to have you teach a class on, on understanding the tarot of food. I mean, this was, you had me at a low. Do you want to talk a little bit about this and, and we're going to have the link below and how you can join us. I would love to. And I love that because I've been teaching this class a while. And when we, um, when this deck was developed, so many things came in later, not understanding that food was related to all these different things and angels, yeah. archangels, ascended masters. But when it came in, I remember the night I was just sitting there and I had my rider weight deck and I was just starting to play with the cards and started to like see. And then, you know, you know, when that download comes you know, in, you're like, oh my goodness. You're like, see you later. Bye. And you forget to, you forget to text people back. or That, that was or, it. I, I get it. It's the same thing when somebody has that aha moment when they go to the store and they're like, what should I have for dinner tonight? And they land on something. Let's just say artichokes. I got to have an artichoke tonight. If you knew why, which you can now with this, you start yeah. to unfold. Artichoke happens to be for our forgiveness card. And maybe they had a fight with their boss that day or their spouse. Like you will see inherent connections. 
Wow. It's related to tarot. I started to really think about all of us and I'm a huge Homer fan. I love Greek and Roman mythology. And I started to think about the hero's journey and I started to realize. <laughs> we, Not that you weren't interesting before, but here we go. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I know there's the many facets of Savante. So what I'd like to say is that the food started showing me that um, the journey that I was on and I started to make connections to really what is the fool? What is the tower? What is the devil? What is the world? What is the universe? And I thought, oh my goodness. And to make a long story short, we created this class. It's one of our most popular. It's turned into a workshop. And I'm so glad someone like you can so appreciate what is shared and how the connections, because literally where you are in that journey with tarot or the heroes, the food's going to guide you now. I, I think it's really interesting too. It's, you know, it's that old adage of like, you know, when the teacher, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And then when the student is ready, the teacher disappears. You know, it's, it's that, I don't mean to go Ted Lasso on everybody, but here we are. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's a dynamic that you start to recognize that, you know, people are, you know, people, I, I love this tool. I love the tool that you're doing, that you're working with and the different angles that you have. That's when you know, just on the business side of it here for a second, the Kickstarter, the fact that you have many different applications, the fact that you can mix them up and go, hey, let's talk about just these 44 cards. You know, let's let's do it this way. Let's talk about, you know, here's your 22, here's your whatever. And then start to kind of like mix and mold. You're going to speak different languages, to different people. And True. where they're at in the path. Like for me, I'm like, Tara, yeah, I, I know my audience up here. Come on up. Come on up. We'll talk about it. That's the class that I think people will show up to. Um, but I but I think it's a dynamic and it's 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 a really important piece to to your path and other people's path. When you start to put yourself out there with creative stuff, you've got to you kind of look like the crazy person in the room until somebody goes, Wow, thank you. That that really worked for me. You know, like I'm a crazy guy until somebody says, oh, that everything you just described is my grandmother until I get validation, you know, on the nutcase on the corner talking to dead people. Right. You are created something and now you're just like you're getting this validation and it's it's yeah. incredible. Um, it's, it's it's pretty amazing. I realize that and everyone knows everyone has a relationship with food, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, challenging, disordered, whatever it is, we all have one. And now we can start to get some of the whys answered from the divine. And that's the greatest gift is that it's bigger than us and allowing us to start to integrate some wisdom that gives us more control, that gives us more clarity, that gives us more healing. And that's the gift for humanity. And to me, it's like a ministry is to be able to show people that you can look at a salad. I mean, when I'm great at dinner parties because I, I can go in and say, my interpret your meal for you. But it's oh. true. Like if you have a salad and it's beautiful and it's filled with beautiful, the rainbow colors, we all talk about eat the rainbow. But literally, I've been to parties where I say, do you realize in this moment you're eating balance and acceptance and love and joy? When they are realizing that they are bringing in those frequencies as they're eating that salad, it takes on an entirely new meaning than just eating a beautiful salad that's healthy for you physically. Now we're talking about going to the esoteric part of your eating, the frequency, mm -hmm. the vibration. So it takes on a whole nother life. And then that's is how we do the healing. That's how we raise the vibration. That's how we create abundance. That's how we manifest. So it's pretty it's, cool. It, it's funny that it, this is, this is a final frontier for me in this work, you know, in terms of delivery and figuring out gift and everything else. I mean, I, I, you know, astrologically, you know, I'll, I'll share this with you and we'll, we'll, we'll get into your astrology when we talk about the most interesting thing about your chart here in a minute. Ooh, but, here we go. Um, okay. I know you're so, you were so like, oh, I get to do that too. And I'm like, you didn't read the press. Nobody reads the press kit. Nobody. nobody I, I, I read the page and I was like, yeah, okay. There's a lot going on here, but now <laughs> hearing you, I'm, I think I'm more auditory. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's all good. It's all good. But I, uh, you know, with my, with my placements, my Jupiter, is conjunct with um, with the moon in the sixth house for me. So for me, I've had this kind of up and down and being a Pisces, horrible feet, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then you also add in all of the chakra stuff going on, my root, my sacral, you know, kind of how I've dealt with food, that relationship with food. Yeah. And like, for me, I was going through this most 
difficult time because I was fighting my gift. I was literally fighting it. I was using it all the time, but I was fighting it. And one of the ways that I would fight it, some people use drugs and alcohol. Some people use, you know, sex or distancing or running or, you know, yeah. whatever boundary it is that they want to do. For me, it was weighing 444 pounds, you know, over 440 pounds and being able to, you know, I would stop at McDonald's on the way home to eat dinner. Like, I mean, talk about, you have to work, you know, if you weigh over 400 pounds and you're you, eat dinner? Old, you had to you had to work. I had to work at it. You know, at keeping that weight on what's up. No. Did you just say I had to eat eat there before dinner or you ate there for dinner? I ate there before dinner. I ate there on the way home. That's what I thought I heard you say. Like I was actively pursuing like this, this just unhealthy thing. And, and it wasn't about, it wasn't even about body image. I mean, there was a little bit of it, but it was more about, how do I, how do I deal with the fact that I'm not doing this other thing? Meanwhile, I was in corporate recruiting and I was interviewing people, but what I was really doing was reading them. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even sure. look at the resume after a while and be like, Oh, yeah. tell me about it. Boom. I know what to do. I see Correct. that. Correct. And it was, a, it was an easy, it was an easy thing for me. So my evolution with this, when I started to lose weight, and I came back to it, you know, I did a lot of simple things. I just started moving, you know, not being sedentary always helps. But yeah. then also, you know, right, it's kind of the simple things. It's like, well, did you try moving? Oh, okay, I'll get up, right? There was that. <laughs> and then there was the other part of like, well, if I only do this, I started putting like subtle limitations on it that weren't absolute. So I could still do it, but not, you know, not be a slave to it. And then I started finding myself like, I'm like, no, I'm good. I, I, you know, laid off the sugar drinks. I got off of the, you know, all that other stuff, all those things that like, the more you read, all you have to do is read one article about what soda does to you and you'll never drink it again. If you really apply it. And but if you become so enlightened, you can't help it. Like honor that soul. That's gotta be a part of it. It's still, I still think that people treat food and this is a broad brush stroke, but I think there's a truism to this. Our human form has the quickest limitation to it. I mean, we talk about like having rights or having people say, oh, they're listening in our conversation, all this stuff that we feel violated. So we already know the combination to violate our spiritual self is to not treat our bodies well. Mm, Without question. That is for sure. Yeah. And the shame that goes around that is huge. And, and it's forgiveness, a, the artichoke that's so needed around that, so important. Is there is there one particular? Oh, and I, I also want to mention the other thing that you're going to be doing up here. Do you want to mention the other place that you'll be at as well? And I'm going to have dates and all the other stuff down here below. I know you're you're at another shop out towards Binghamton, I think. Yeah, um, the it's uh, Bainbridge, New York, Seven Stones amazing store and we are going to have this wonderful gathering on friday uh, you're going to have the dates um i think it's yep. the 19th you're going to have uh, everything down below guys okay perfect this is um very different than what we're doing here on sunday sunday we're traveling the world of tarot friday night we're going to be basically introducing you i'm going to be teaching you about intuitive food therapy because what has evolved from these teachings is is Yes, a deck came out. We teach you about elements. We teach you about chakra, but there's so much more. Why? Because there's frequency, there's epigenetics. There's lots of things that go into what makes us tick and what makes us evolve. And so this is the beginning of understanding that we actually have a modality that is training people to become intuitive food therapists. And you can be that for yourself. So I want to teach about intuitive food therapy using these decks and then some. Yeah. So long-term goal, are you, are you okay to talk about your, your vision with how to train people in this? <laughs> I can, I can talk about it, but it's ever evolving. So what I might be saying now might be different in the, in the future, but right. well, well, I do, well, I do well, talk about the, vi- talk about the vision of it, because I yeah. think this is, you've already got a great product, but, but I think it's important that people understand how much you're, how much, how accessible this is. Like that's that the I part I share. really want people to hear. And pretty timely too. I was asked to be part of a a, a book of collectives called the Energy Healers Oracle, and the lead author is out of Wales and London, and lots of modalities I haven't even heard of. Well, I was selected to be one. There's very few Americans. The book's coming out in June, 
And when I went to create my chapter, I had to create a chapter about my, my, you know, my story, my mini memoir. And then I had to create a mem I had to create a tool or something that people could be healed right there, right then on those pages. So they can't go off and buy a deck. They can't go, they ha can't go somewhere else. They had to be healed right there. And I realized when I sat back and looked at the teachings mm. that there is way more to this understanding of how to tap into our essence. And oh. from that moment, uh, the lead author had said, the angels wanted you to know um, that they'd like you to have this name, intuitive food therapy, because everyone could understand intuitive food and therapy, no matter what culture, what language, everyone understands those words. So as a result, the Center for Intuitive Food Therapy was born. And that is what is the future, is creating an atmosphere or a hub where healers of all kinds can be part of this who do want to tap into how to nourish the body temple in the best way to, for longevity, for her, um, for mental health reasons. I'm sorry, I don't know if you're hearing that noise. Um, it's okay, and, everybody's got to mow their lawn. You're clear, you're clearly... Yeah. Do you eat grass? Is grass one of the foods? Just a question. <laughs> eat grass, one. right? Yeah. Uh, it is in our deck. Anyways, the Center for Tude Food Therapy is called SIFT, is now really my baby because it's housing a much bigger understanding of bringing all sorts of healers in. Yes, being trained as intuitive food therapists, we have certification programs for that. And a lot more is unfolding by the moment. Astrology, crystals, oils, yeah. how everything relates to the dynamics of how to feed our body. I, 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 think it's, I, I think this really speaks to where we're at too. I mean, listen, the, the, the head scarves and the crystal balls. I mean, it's, it's so, I mean, I just, I, I kind of laugh when I see people kind of like, Oh yes, I met him, whoever. And you're like, okay, that's kind of fun. I, I appreciate you on your path. But when I see people like evolve us, when I see people evolve, the people that are hungry for more, um, you're not afraid. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to just be like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to do it. And people are like, well, what else is out there? You know, and the fact that you had, a, a, you know, a Kickstarter type of thing tells me that it just resonated on a lot of different levels. And now when you go out there, you see it. I mean, I had a great experience right out of the gate. I'm like, holy Toledo. I still think wow. somebody swiped my deck, by the way. I know I bought Oh my goodness. It. I know we got to make good on that. I know. You know, it, you know it, we... and it's, it's so funny because I remember um, like I'm going to the airport and I'm like, where's this deck? Where's this deck? I'm like, oh, I buried it somewhere. And two A week later, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll finally unpack or whatever. And I'm like, where the heck is, I lost my mind. And I think I sent you a message. And you were just like, I'll see you at the next show, Brandon. It's, 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 it's all good. It's, it's really all good. Um, and then I get your book and I, did I even give you a deck? I don't even remember. Well, we no, got to make sure that it's happens. Okay. It's okay though. I know how this stuff runs. It's all good. Oh, stop. It, it, it's it's you know, all good. I, I think about that Kickstarter and, I, and we actually had to do it twice because we did the first deck and people kept saying for two years, we want more food. We want more food. I'm thinking 60 foods. That's quite a lot. How, how many are on there? How many, the, how many cards? The first deck is 60. The second yeah. deck is 60 more plus bonus cards. So let's just say 64. So chefs are making intentional meals. Restaurants are starting to create meals around setting intentions with the foods. So now we're, I don't, you know, I live on a farm and suddenly it's the day to be mowing or something like you said, but yeah, we have 124 foods. And so that's a lot of foods to work with, but there's so many more and um, there may be more foods in the future. Do you, do you <laughs> ever teach class? I mean, you, you're talking about coaching. You're talking about this. Do you ever have like master classes for chefs or junior chefs or whatever? Um, we don't have uh, classes yet, but I am working with chefs personally. And that's interesting. Yep. I'm working. Uh, I just started working with some people down in Costa Rica. And yeah, I am starting to uh, work with restaurants, chefs. My I think that's your next frontier, by the way. Thank you. Well, if we're putting it out to the universe, we have a growing audience in Japan. 
and on Joe and in Japan, I mean, the way the Japanese are so ceremonial around food, I yeah. would, that's my goal is to teach this there and actually start working with chefs who can really create a conscious meal from start to finish. To yeah, I really, you know, and I think, I think like the consciousness, I, I mean, I love the idea. I mean, I'm conscious medium, Brandon. When I was calling myself conscious medium, it was, you know, two years before the slope of everything becoming conscious, right? But here's the positive for me. We now understand its application of the word. And, you know, like me, I, I, you know, how I intend to really kind of apply this, I love to cook. I love, like, I say this to people all the time. If I cook for you, I care about you, right? Because that's my, that's my heart and soul. That's my stuff. Like you might, you might not be there when I make it, but if I bring you leftovers, if I bring you the meal, if I bring you whatever, I want to share this with you, right? And I've gotten really much into the routine of, you know, I was a kid that grew up with, you know, processed everything, right? So the big tree, one of the one of the biggest tricks, I guess you could say, in the whole thing is if you use fresh ingredients or you're consistent with how with how you use, you know, just stuff that's good for your body, people rave about it. And it's, you know, and I'm not trying to become a world famous chef or any anything by that nature, although maybe that's my final frontier. It's it's hey, maybe there's a collaboration we don't even know yet. It's a I, listen, I I'm down. You know that. Like, <laughs> I'm the easiest going guy. I, you know, one of my challenges is, is that I just say yes. And then, you know, off we go. Um, but okay. So guys, a couple of things right out of the gate. You're going to have a couple of dates here in upstate New York, uh, May 19th, 20th, 21st. Um, she's going to be in upstate New York. Got to connect with her. If you want to connect with her beyond that, go ahead and visit her website. Um, Lainey does some amazing thing. We're going to talk about this Monte thing here in a second. Um, but right now I think it's time for us to take a look at the most interesting thing in your chart. How do you feel about that? I don't know. I, I can't, I, I guess I feel a little excited, nervous, maybe. Okay. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm, you're right where I need you to be then. Okay. Perfect. Right. All right perfect. Right, can I say right one more now. thing? Well, yeah, sure. Of course. You can say I, 10 more things. Well, when you said I grew up with foods that were processed, yeah, I was a little jealous of that because that's what most of the people in my neighborhood uh, had. I grew up with a mother who would say this over and over, more than three, leave it be. Meaning if there was like more than a few ingredients, I wasn't eating it. And I would be so jealous of everybody who was eating food that to me oh. was like the fun stuff. And it, it would turn out later and it wasn't until just, and then we can move on to the speaking of astrology that I was probably six or eight years old that I was running around the uh, metaphysical store while she was getting a reading and a reader looked down at her and said, she died of a, uh, died of food poisoning in a past life. There it is. And wouldn't it be Isn't surprising? Isn't that amazing? Six to eight years old, and I remembered it. And she goes, wouldn't it be surprising if I ended up doing something in food this time? And then later on, somebody I did a reading with, she says, oh, it wasn't just one time. It was many times. So this is that time that's being healed. So, yes, I'm so interested to hear what's most interesting in my chart. Yeah, and I thought you would find that interesting. Since we're on the past life conversation, we might as well go here, too. Um I know, I know that one of my lives ended because I was malnutritioned. Wow. Because when so, my stomach, brother. when my stomach gets to a point of empty, I lose my mind. Like, I think I'm drowning. I really do. You, I, like, I become a Snickers commercial. I become Abe Vigoda. Like, I'm like ready to like yell at everybody and like get mad and angry with them. I do that if I see an empty refrigerator, I go into this feeling of lack if it's not filled with everything that I could possibly imagine. Isn't that crazy? So are we working out like a past life connotation? I'm certain of it. I'm certain of it. And when I come, I do wow. want to talk to you about giving you a chakra reading with the food. Oh that my is gosh. actually one of the spreads in the deck that I actually lay the cards on you chakra wise. And we do take a look from a food perspective of what's going on. Well, well let's talk about that after we do uh, the most interesting thing in your chart. Please. All right, guys, hang on. We're going to be right back. Okay. All right, everybody. We are back with the most interesting thing about Lainey's chart. Um, 
first of all, how does it feel to be a polarized Cancerian sun with Venus on one side and Mars on the other side? Do you ever feel like you are just the center of all attention all the time? No, I felt I thought I was going to go with. It feels very polarizing, but you tell me. <laughs> well, well, what's interesting is, is in your first house, you're like ready to fight for the underdog, right? Yeah. And you're hey, that's so- That's kind of what Savante is, by the way. That's my- Oh, favorite. yeah. Now we're getting into Savante. We're starting to understand your alter ego. We'll, wow. we'll talk about that here in a second. But of course, here in your 10th house, I can't not talk about, you know, first of all, you've got this grand trine activity all over the place. You've got many, many trines here going on. As a matter of fact, most of your chart is trine. And it's, it's to me, the most interesting thing that kind of comes out of this. Wow, look at that 10th house. You know, you're busy. You're busy with the moon. You're conjunct to your, um, to your Saturn that goes into the 11th. You're a natural. Did you mention that you work for a chamber of commerce? I um, I was the president of three, not one, but two, three. I was crazy. Who's counting? Uh, yeah. Who's ridiculous. counting the underachiever? Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the Holistic Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, there is a Holistic Chamber of Commerce. That's pretty awesome. I really yeah. like that. Of course you are. Well, your moon is sitting in the 10th house, so you and, and, and your north node, you have to be good at this. You have to be good at networking, Right. You also have the dynamic, boy, I, I go back to this, this, this sun sitting in the first house. You're conjunct with Venus, which by the way, that's where the looks are coming. Don't deny them, that's where you're at. But then you've got this polarizing thing where you're just like, don't make me feel like I have to fight for this. You're probably in the most comfortable time of your life. You also have the Pluto uh, Uranus conjunction there in the fourth house, which means that family is a different kind of feel for you. Yes, mom's upbringing might, might, might have been a little bit tough on you, but that alternate ending part is what you're living now. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And it's, you know, and by the way, you don't really like to get up and talk in front of people unless it's something you really, really know and you really, really love. Like if I, if I gave you a pen and told you to sell a pen, you'd be like, I'm not selling a pen. I'm not doing that. But if you want to get up there and talk about food oracle cards, you're going to knock it out of the park. Uh -huh. Is that 12th house is about hopes and dreams as well. And guess what? With with Mercury sitting there with something that you could be really passionate about, that's kind of your legacy too, because it's sitting right on your rising sign. So you're a double cancer, right? Cancer rising, cancer sun, and the moon in Aries, which just kind of means that you just got this fierce thing about you that it's like you get underestimated a lot. And when <laughs> And when push comes to shove, when you need to step up, you're like, uh, I'm here from destiny and I'm supposed to do this. So best, best of luck to you. You probably have to dismiss some people that might have mistaken your kindness for weakness. Oh boy. Have you been spying on me or what? <laughs> yeah. Nope. Just reading your so, chart. So right on. Thanks. Wow. This is. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And very it, cool. You know, so you do astrology work as well. And, and, you know, and it's funny I love that you put the centerpiece of food and then the astrology kind of comes into it. If I was looking at this from a health perspective, and it's interesting, your sixth house is empty. It's void. You got nothing going on here, right? And you've got Mercury in opposition to it, but it's it's kind of like Anne Lilith. So you've got some personal healing going on with it. You would be squared otherwise with your Chiron. But where do you find your markers, if you will, in astrology for, for health? Where do you find it in your chart? Mm, you'd have to rephrase that. I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, this isn't a legal question, hon. You're not in a deposition. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But it's like most people just kind of have, you know, if I had anticipated a chart, I would have said you probably have some forces reckoning in your sixth house since you're so, you know, like it's a personal journey because a lot of the stuff that you're talking about, it's like personal journey stuff. But this is a great example of how this is concurrent for you without that impact of the sixth house, of the health house, so to speak, right? Instead, you have a very active fourth house which is the intuitive, take care of it, nurturing thing. 
and you're you're approaching it from a bigger level. Wow. Right? You're approaching it from a grander scale, even though it's a personal house. And by the way, what, um, was mom intuitive? Was grandpa? Well, I'm fourth generation. My great grandmother was a town psychic in Russia. Yeah, like like we. My mother was the animal healer. She's still well. She's you know not doing anymore. But yeah, all of us have had the gift. Even my one of my daughters has just really shown signs of it. But it's so interesting to go back to what you just said. You know, I came in really strongly with um, uh, being just a little uh, scared of food, scared of everything. And so here, learning that I died early in a past life, you know, hypochondria and just being trying to be one step ahead of everything has always been kind of right there that I needed to absorb everything and just become sort of this academic in addition to the intuitive, just so I feel like I can, uh, you know, make proper decisions from the hypochondriac standpoint. And, and, and it's interesting too, because, you know, you talk about past life and, you know, you pay attention to the nodes with, with past lives, some other placements too, but in your case, you know, your North node is in Aries and your South node is in, Aries, is in uh, Libra. Libra is sitting there in the fourth house, meaning like you need some level of stability in this life where it's like maybe you just didn't trust people but the fact that the north node is sitting in conjunct and i mean near direct conjunct to your moon is that you're going to have this you needed to have a passionate thing to make yourself go out there the 10th house of course being career and valued and the things yeah. that you make money at you needed to truly kind of love this and of course chiron in aries is also the self-identity of self-worth, self-value, you know, mm -hmm. recognizing that like you don't have to take everything personal. You know, when someone says no to you, it's not the end of the world, right? In the 10th house, you had to really kind of build that muscle of what do you mean you don't like my deck? Like you had to kind of create a philosophy or an understanding that the, the right people are going to see this. The right people are going to be working with you. How and interesting that, that I would choose that for doing something never been done before that I am literally having to, you know, walk a path with new breadcrumbs. <laughs> no breadcrumbs were laid out for me. <laughs> it's funny. I, I say that all the time in my work. I'm like, nobody does this. I mean, people are mediums and people do, you know, but I, you know, for me, I, I, you know, I'm closer to Robin Williams than I am in any other medium. Like, it's just, I just open up and I just dream of consciousness. That's why it's called what it is. And it's a different feel. And I, you know, when I looked around for people that I could look up to, it wasn't mediums. It wasn't mystics. You know, I'm, I'm well read on Edgar Cayce. I, I, you know, read everything under the sun about Nostradamus. I understand Gene Dixon, Sylvia Brown, like all of them. Like, let's just go down the list. I didn't find it. I didn't understand how I worked until I really watched Robin Williams. And I'm like, holy, holy crap. That's what I do. That right there is what I do. And it's, it's a blessing when you find that. And I think in your chart, you know, your ninth house is wide open. Your eighth house is wide open. Your seventh, your sixth. These are all indicators of like things that push you in that direction. You are self-made in this. Wow. And, and it is that triad. It's, it's that triad of what's going on with the 10th, the fourth, and the first house. All of that action. And, and even, listen, even with Venus in your second house, you're still conjunct to your son. So that's all important stuff, all important stuff. And that's why I love this segment, because now you understand, you know, you hear a little bit of your story, and then we take a look at your chart. And guess what? You were built to be the spokesperson for people of that, that piece that we all are just missing in this spiritual journey where we think we're doing it right. But then the reality is, is that we need help. And you figured out a way you're speaking in the language of the people for them to be able to understand what the next step is. It's amazing. It's amazing chart. It's so apropos that you would say speaking in the language because this is created an entire new language. There are people who only write me letters and food. You know, I am so mango. I have filled with so much strawberries. I have immense moringa. They literally, and I know the language and we speak in the food. It's a language that you would just say that right to my heart. That's a line of t-shirts. I'm so mango. Do you know what? We have four. And if you're a music guy, you would really love it. We have um, almonds to the people, which is power to the people. 
We have um, Give Olives a Chance, which is Give Peace a Chance. I've done a few of them already, but I'd like to do more. Oh, yeah. You know, Magic Carpet Ride, which is Stefan Wolf's. Um, no, I've heard it. Mushroom Carpet Ride. <laughs> Yeah, Ta-da. but we have really incorporated music and vibration and food. It is an entire new language. It's, it's, and, and, oh, less talk, more tomato. Less talk, more action. Tomatoes action? Yeah. No wonder why the Italians love it so much. Seriously, and fire element, right? You got all that red, that just Listen. passion, passion, sensuality. And if you're talking, and if you're talking to a crystal person, where you're talking about your carnelian and your red jasper and your vitality, if you're talking to an herbalist, you're talking about the inner fire as opposed to the cooling down. You know, like all of these languages become a Venn diagram, and that's why this is Merkaba learning. This is why your stuff is so important. It's filling a part of the Merkaba that people didn't. They were looking for it, and they didn't realize it wasn't there until it was suddenly there. Now they can't unsee it. That's How what we that? say. You know what? You'll never look at food the same way again, and I'm never going to look at like astrology the same way again or who I am, thanks to you. So well, thank, thank you. you very much. And listen, what a great way to wrap up the most interesting thing in your chart. <laughs> at least one. I'm totally blown away. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So listen, wel- welcome back if you, for some reason, missed the most interesting thing in our in in Lainey's chart here. We can go back to it, but we mentioned Savante, and I want to kind of dive into that. Now that we've seen your chart, what was the inspiration of Savante, and who started calling you this? <laughs> well, some people choose a name. Some people are given a name from their guru. Some people just happen to be driving down the freeway and hear a voice as it spirits right in the car that says, you are Savante. That would Mm. be me. I said, whoa, what is that? So I went home and this was in 2009. So it wasn't just the other day, but it was in 2009, but Google was around. And I said, well, I'm going to just look up Savante to see what it is. If it even means anything. Well, sure enough, it's actually a derivative of three different things. Savante is worship in Sanskrit, which couldn't have been more ideal for me. But then when you break down Savante into Seva, Seva is selfless service to others. And so you reading the chart, it was like, well, well, that was my destiny. And Savant's like a wisdom teacher. So between worship, which is Sanskrit, and I love Hinduism and everything about what I do, I'm definitely a kirtan girl. Uh, those three embodiments really resonated for me. And uh, most, uh, not most, but a lot of people have only called me Savante and since 2009. And others call me Laney Savante and others people call me Laney. But Savante really is my, uh, you know, my the name I love most. Because that really represents my work and who I am. You know, it's 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 funny because you you go back and forth with that and you know i i always talk to people on their path with this like you know what should my alternative name you know should be and and one of the one of the things that just drive me crazy in this business and work is when people don't use their pictures when they promote themselves because they think you're hiding something you naturally are hiding something when you use an alternative name where you never embrace your other name that got you there and that's why, like, when you were like, oh, it's Lenny Savante, some people just shorten it up with Savante, like, you honored it. Like, you were just like, yeah, this is this is who I am, but this, when I'm in this moment, I'm doing this other work. And I, I think, you know, my philosophy on that is, is that if it becomes you, then it's fantastic. Like, I don't have to say I'm conscious meeting Brandon. I'm just like, hey, I'm Brandon Ross, you know, w- whatever. I Those are things that have augmented certain things when I'm in that character role of that role to you in that life. And it's great to see where you came from with that, because it's just another thing of like divine inspiration or divine connection. And we just found it in your chart. How cool is that? That's unbelievable. It's the first time I've ever heard that. I decided I came in in 2009. But I do find called more and more to use it as much as possible now. I'm starting to just say, join Savante on my radio show, um, you Nurse Your Soul Show with Savante. It's really, you know, the next um, iterations of whatever work I bring out in the world would just be by Savante. And so it, it is starting to be more of, you know, the name I'm using in the world, where before yeah. it was Laney quote 
say. And Lainey feels more of like the business side of me. And Savante's definitely, you know, where, you know, it's just a whole different vibration. It's almost divine masculine and feminine if I looked at it that way. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And, it, you know, and it's kind of, we all go through, I, I joked around with somebody, I, I work with a lot of men now, which uh-huh. I think is really like, I'm realizing more and more men need kind of that spiritual bridge gap because oh, a like, thousand percent, you know, how, how do I touch a crystal and not feel gay? And I'm like, all right, well, first of all, it's 19, it's not 1950 anymore. Okay. Can we pass <laughs> that? Yeah. But then there's the other part of it where it's like, I don't, I want to, at the, at the root of every guy that wants to get it, to get it, to become conscious or become fine tuned or, or whatever. It's, it's, it's driven by two things. It's first and foremost, because they want to understand how they themselves work. And they realize that the, the, the toxic masculinity, so to speak, actually came from the misappropriation of like what our roles were in this life, right? The over-obligation, all of that stuff, right? It's, it's one of the signs of moving out of the, the, you know, time of Pisces and moving into the time of Aquarius, right? Where we're no longer kind of like this burdened, obligation but we can be whole and then learn how to interact like we don't have to be the er all the time right the second thing is is that you find value in another person to want to do it right like you you have a mirror you have a soul person you have and it doesn't necessarily mean romantic sometimes it's a you know these people need me or this person needs me or you know yeah. whatever the case may be it's it's sometimes it's more subtle than the lightning bolt of love And it's, and I'm finding this over and over again. And I think it's interesting. This food piece of it is a critical thing. I mean, guys think they can't be guys. I I hang out with a group of guys and I would consider them conscious. They are, they're down to earth. They're on a path. They're articulate. They're purposeful. And when we go out on Wednesday nights, we eat all you can eat sushi. It's awful. They see us coming and they just shiver. They just, they're just like, here, here they come. These guys are about to hit it. Right. We're respectful, but we get our money's worth. And they know it. But we kind of joke around. We're just like, we're like, are we being like dumbass guys like this? Like, shouldn't we, you know, kind of whatever. And we talk, these are the things that like we talk about where we talk about like, hey, you know what? I always look forward to this night because this is like my reward. You know, this is, this is why I did the, you know, the salad and the, you know, and the, and the beat mix earlier and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this is why I'm doing shakes now. It's like. Then when we hear that, it's like, hey, here's my chance to just still keep that sliver, you know, and be and run a fantasy football league and, you know, just hang out with guys or whatever the case may be. I actually think that your food stuff actually can resonate with guys being reconciled with themselves and still keep their masculine divine purpose with all of this, too, because I've, I've seen it. Right. That's huge. I I would love the opportunity to spend time exploring that. Yeah. Uh, I just know that with my with my husband and talking about food. I mean, there's so much more he knows now. And you know, from when we met to now, I mean, when I channeled that he was in the lineage of Merlin, he just thought I had three heads. But when he sat and thought about it and realized the connection, uh, he goes by Merlin now. And people I, call him Merlin. You know, he's a wizard in the music realm. But yeah. In terms of food, it's amazing what when you start to wake up to what you're choosing and what you're eating and what what with your mood or who you had the conversation. You start if you had a food journal and start making these connections of like that makes sense. Or, you know, somebody pulled the rug under out from under you, you lost the promotion and you can use some support. And that day you're eating butternut squash, which is our support card. Like there are inherent things you can actually do to get out of the rut, to get you back into the game. And I could really see talking to people and showing them how to maneuver that round (laughs) that way. Well, well, you and I, you and I had a, had a sidebar conversation when we were like, Hey, let's set some stuff up. And I shared with you a little bit about my healing journey and whatever. Um, these cards could not be in my life at a better time. Like what? hands down, like even when I, even when I saw it, what, six months ago, we met six months ago or so. Mm-hmm. Even when I saw it, I'm like, wow, these are incredible. These are fantastic. And I'm like, and I still freaking somebody lifted in them. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so, but that was on purpose. Like whoever had to take those took them, right? Like it's, it's the reason why we run crystal shops and then we never, you know, uh, by the way, really run, really well-run crystal shops never do inventory 
because if somebody stole it, we just, we chalk it up to, they needed it. We just do it, right? No, we don't want you to take the $500 specimen piece. Don't be greedy. But if you put a $2 crystal in your pocket, we kind of go, okay, all right, it's a day, right? Where am I going with this? When, when we realize that like things show up when they're supposed to, or we lose things when we're supposed to, or they shift it, you, you just, you just embrace the journey. You just embrace the idea with it. And I got really excited again when we were just, you know, talking and shooting the breeze and schedules happen the way that it did. I'm okay with it. Like, and you were okay with it. You were like, oh, I'm supposed to meet your people that, that weekend. I'm supposed to meet you know, seven stone that weekend, like you Talk were about just, serendipity, <laughs> you, you know, you just started laughing and I'm just like, okay, here you go. Um, but listen, so we got to do another part here. I know you want to talk a little bit about, let, let's, let's talk for just a minute or so about what's a session like for you? Like what's a one-on-one session when you're with able me. to really kind of sit down and work with them and coach them? What, what, what does that look like? What's kind of the template? Yeah. So I, I have a multitude of modalities. So yes, what would I be pulling cards? I do that. But really I look at create getting rid of the cobwebs, going into what is stagnation, what is the limiting beliefs, because we all carry them. Um, and so I do come from a very well-stocked multi-generational family, as I mentioned. And so I'm really good at working with someone, seeing what's going on. I use the cards. I, the foods speak to me. Um, the foods are just, you know, I'm looking at just this card right now, blackberries. Oh, talk to me about blackberries. It's a procrastination card, which really brings up a lot in people. So what the foods are telling me instantly what's going on. And I could be t- talking about maybe the picture. Are, I you taking, are, are, you, are you taking this for me? Well, you know what? I, I There are 124 cards over here. I did grab this one. So let's talk about this with you. But, you know, it's very interesting. Where does procrastination lie? We start talking about the mindset. We start talking about the belief systems. We start talking about the air elements. And we start creating that puzzle and putting things together and then how to kind of bring that open to uh, awareness. And then we start to clear them. I do advanced theta healing. I do some clearings. So a session's really uplifting because you walk away with a full knowledge. Sometimes I even might say, and you know what? Go make a meal with that. Anchor that into the physical because now that we've brought it in, we want to create the balance between emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual. So we have that whole holistic healing wellness. And so it's way more than just eating the food. So uh, in terms of procrastination, are you a procrastinator? I'm going to say yes. And then some. And so we look at this because sometimes it doesn't feel safe to leave the nest and make our way out and start start to venture. You overthink it, you overanalyze it, therefore then you never do it. So how do you get from that into grounding yourself? Oh, next card sitting right here. I'd be going right into balance. What's gonna bring you the balance? Cucumbers, finding your way back to um an area where you can balance the earth and the fire or earth and the sky. And so I kind of look at how to massage all that into um, a picture of what you need or what's going on. And I definitely can come in and just see a lot of times people just sit there and say, okay, read, but most of the time people just come in and tell me what's going on and just it's bring it all out. And and then the the cards somehow coincide that. So I'll get, I'll give you some validation here. You know, the procrastination isn't necessarily that I, I, actually get a lot done my procrastination tends to be like in the moment in other words like do i am i going to have enough time to finish this whole thing i've got a bunch of promotion i've got the rest of my summer to promote and pull together cards you're jumping in here i've got to get that placard you know it's like stuff like that where i'm like oh yeah i gotta get to it and then i go to do it and i'm like i'm just gonna i'm gonna meditate for a minute and it turns into a 45 minute nap and i'm so sorry that i took a power nap before this and i'm kind of rubbing it in your face and but we had no internet and that's why we ended up talking at three o'clock in the afternoon anyways but my question is is okay great i'm seeing you know the berries the blackberries and the and the cucumbers how do i incorporate that is so is the suggestion that i put that into my diet now um, it is. It no. is it definitely depending on when we talk further. It's not. Oh, I pull procrastination. I don't want to procrastinate anymore. Should I? I'm not. I'm going to eat blackberries. It's more. It's more looking at sort of the bigger picture and looking at 
uh, what's going on. For me, I still feeling it's more so much um, mindset and thinking and overthinking and thinking it so much that it's, like I said, then you don't do it. And so I did hear a little bit about that in you just now saying that that's what happens. Things can stack and then you're like, you know what, I'm just going to give it a minute and then are you going to go pick it back up? But it's like keeping the balance. It's the consistency of starting, finishing, starting, finishing, and keeping the flow so your energy doesn't go up, down, all around, and then you eat badly because you're out of balance. You sound like my therapist is what you sound like. <laughs> ah, was that, are we there? Okay, so that's yeah, you're two to- You're totally there. Now, now, what do cucumbers help with? Um, Well, cucumbers are a water element, so they help with flow. But what's great is cucumbers are... Uh, our balance card. So they bring our pH back into balance. So if our mood's off, or let's just say with a pH scale, which is acidic yeah. all the way down here and alkaline there, it brings us back here. It brings us back into center. And if you go back looking, that's also our heart chakra. It's bring things what matters most, not what I should be doing because obligations or other people's expectations. It's that what does my heart want the most and what lines yeah. up with my divine path? I, I, I think this is fascinating. Can you go one more card? Because I think I'm going to make a salad. Okay. Well, here you go. Avocado for healing. Come on. Come <laughs> on, dog. You can't make that up. You can't make that up. It's right here. Is there a more trendy, manly thing to throw into a salad with blackberries and cucumbers and avocado? Okay, well, here, um, totally unrelated, but I'm pulling it. It must be a reason. I'm pulling it from the second helpings deck. This is saffron. I just had a conversation with saffron about saffron. You're I'm not kidding you. Well, I actually had to reach a little further over and I was like, I'm pulling from the stack way over there and I'm going to really dig to find the right card for him. And this is what came up and it's our ancestors card. So now I'm going to share this with you. I feel like I'm in the phase of my life and my journey where I'm doing ancestral healing. Mic drop. You heard it here. Wait till you see what he brings out into the world because of this. Yes, this would be, I'd be, creating a saffron dish or say you're a master chef i'd be looking at this think about that root yeah. grounding that in from ancestral healing bringing right. that out and here it's giving people a spoonful of the wisdom from their ancient memories and bringing in the element of fire to and you know it. if i was to and i'm going to do this i don't know if saffron's going to go with avocado although yeah i think it could i can see those i mean it's a different palette I'm going to use some sort of like lime juice thing, though, to kind of bring it out. Anyways, I'll share it with you. So could you pull like an onion or a scallion or a leek or something? Could you give me a little flavor here with this? I wish I could. I uh, Let's do that. Let's just give it a go. So here. <laughs> what let's a recipe. See. I'm going to make this, by the way. I will make this. I will make this into a meal. But interesting. You did get lemons. Lemons. All right. I can work with that. <laughs> I can make anything work. And you know what? Lemons is the alchemy card. So talk about work. That's mystically putting it all together and creating an intentional meal. And then you can actually take all the foods and create an affirmation. I do that every day with a smoothie. Whatever foods I'm called to, I put it in a blender and it's like, okay, vitality, celery, abundance, apples. Like I am going to have a, uh, a day full of abundant vitality. And I literally say that as I'm making, and I have, I, I have a smoothie book I wrote and it literally has recipes of course you using do. the cards. It's of course like, yeah. you do. Cause it's, it's, it, you know, we're coming into the summertime and what does everybody love to make is smoothies where it's like, smoothies. you know, it's, it's like we became, smoothies. we became epidemiologists during a pandemic. And then we become, you know, tax experts around the 15th of April. And then we become smoothie expert as the weather gets, you know, nicer around the country. This there you is go. Pretty incredible. I'm going to imagine gonna... though, having smoothies that are actually providing an energetic protocol for your day. That's what they are doing. Uh, you know, I, I I have to tell you, this is this is a great time. This is great timing. And I love that everybody tunes in. And yes, we're going to do the five good minutes. Don't worry. But it's, you know, I'm on this journey and I'm naturally curious. So when I see something resonates with me, I automatically assume now that it's going to resonate with other people. 
That's why I want people to visit your website. I want them to sign up for your for your email list. I want them to to buy these cards. They're relatively inexpensive. When you open them up, it won't make sense to you at first until you start working with them. That's that's the simple. If I can give some some subtle advice, start working with them. Even if you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Boom. Maybe you start with it subtly and be like, I'm I'm making something and I want to add something to it. Read if you're the going book. to the grocery store, grab a card and say, I'm going to add this in because it, it just becomes, you can integrate this and not feel like you're all in, which, you know, the MLM world is like, you got to become our shake entrepreneurs and blah, 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 and all that other stuff. Yeah. This speaks to the people that really want to do the work and don't want to get wrapped up into this, right? They don't want well, to. We make it paradigm. pretty simple. We have, uh, there's nine spreads in the second deck. There's eight. We're almost sold out of the first. So uh, if you do uh, grab them, uh, but we definitely have seconds. But there's a whole beginning of what are chakras, what foods relate to chakras, what are elements, what foods relate to elements. And then nine spreads on how to rearrange these cards for spreads like in any other Oracle deck that will answer your question. There's a wealth spread, there's an ancestor spread. Uh, there's there's really a celebration spread, you know, New Year's. We have provided a Fibonacci spread, really a state of completion. So we've created ways for okay. um, anyone who's a beginner or to an expert on how to get the information. Even if it's just creating your daily manifest, your daily apricot, what do I need to manifest today? And pull one card and see what that tells you in the morning and see how the day progresses yeah so we, yeah so thank you yeah i love you. everything about this i think it's a pretty fantastic thing and uh it, and like everything else we got to head towards the end so this is why we're going to do we're going to finish strong i call i call this a strong finish this is a part where i pepper you with a bunch of questions everything oh from gosh. pop culture a little bit of politics a little bit of oddities and what have you oh and my god i'm starting to sweat okay. good i you know that's it's kind of the hot seat so for five good minutes, which by the way, I don't really count how long it is, but I want you to feel the pressure. was the five good minutes. I mean, oh that's no, oh, oh no. That yeah, is all right, bring it, I'm ready. That's your soul path, that's what that is. But in five good minutes, I'm gonna pepper you with a whole bunch of questions. We just want your quick and honest answer. And we're really gonna learn what makes Lainey Savante tick. All right, Lainey, here we go. We're going to put five good minutes up on the clock. What are you shaking your head for? What are you worried about? I don't know. I don't know. So a couple of rules here. You have okay. to give your best answer that you can. You can go back and, and elaborate on it more, but we're going to keep going with it. You cannot take the fifth. You cannot, you know, rule out, you know, uh, you know, self-incrimination and that sort of thing. That's kind of the fun of it. And as we get going into this, I just want you to relax and have fun with it. Let people kind of see the true you. You ready? Uh, yes. One, can I ask one question about the questions? Oh yeah, please. Is it a one word answer or is it a, a, a it's whatever, you, fe it's whatever you feel you can fit in? Oh, okay. Okay. I'm ready. But I will cut you off if you get into philosophy. You ready? Yes. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Good. ready. Oh, well, you ready? Oh, you ready? Am I ready? First concert you ever went to? Oh my gosh. I think it was Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. Who opened? I don't remember. Was I, it Maggie I, May time, 1978? Oh, I, I stand corrected. Definitely not Rod Stewart. It was Arlo Guthrie, and I got a contact high, and I must have been like six or eight years old again, just kind of running in like the aisles. I went Group with my- Group W dad. bench. You can get anything you want. I love it. I Arlo love Guthrie. it. You know, I'm like, you know I'm like 25 miles, and I almost did a show at his church, right? Did not, no. Oh my gosh, don't get me I haven't started. even been to your area. I can't wait to come. Well, you know, the tour is coming. All right, favorite color? Red. Mm. Yeah. What was the last time you meditated and where'd you go? Medicated? I don't remember. You mean what kind of medication? Like Yeah, illegal, what kind of meditation legal? did you do? Did you say medicate, meditated or medicated? I'm going to stick to meditation. Thank you. Was the last time I you meditated? In a totally different way and <laughs> didn't think we were going there. Um, meditation is I meditate every morning and I am an avid, uh, uh, I like to pr practice Hindu. I have my mala beads. I chant the Hanuman Chalisa and I go everywhere and then some. Furthest, furthest point you've ever been away from home? Australia. My daughter lives in Australia. 
went to see her first time last year was the first time because of COVID in three years. Gosh, that wow. COVID. And then it's been a year. She lives so far in Tasmania, like just boop on the other side is Antarctica far. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Where, where do you want to go? Where haven't you been yet? Uh, I haven't been to Egypt and I haven't been to Morocco. Both have strong energetic pulls for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have a trip coming up at the end of the year, a business trip to India, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. Of course you do. You have to go find more cards from around the world. All <laughs> there right, you go. <laughs> who's your favorite beetle? Oh, Paul, all the way. In fact, I'm staring at a Paul McCartney painting right now. I love it. Yeah. When was the time that you realized that spirit was active in your life? How old were you? What was the situation? Can you believe that's the one that's stumping me? All the other ones I knew straight away. Well, Paul's an easy answer. Is Paul easy? Well, Paul, that was an authentic answer. I'm still doing this show. There are people out the window wondering what I'm doing in here. Uh, I don't remember the last, I'm still doing a live show and I'm being in a hot seat right now. I don't remember the first time that spirit was active in my life. I can't remember because it's been my entire life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to really think about that one. Can we favorite, do a pass? Or favorite, I can do a favorite, TV, favorite, favorite TV show when you were under 10. Uh, I don't remember when I was under 10. I was literally going to say work and Mindy, but that was way later because I love Robin Williams. So when you said Robin you've Williams- come to, You've come to the right podcast. I came to the right podcast. Uh, I just remember Almighty oh Isis and Shazam. Oh, Shazam. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you totally, yeah, you're kind of hitting that for sure. Am I hitting um, it? But Almighty oh, Isis and Wonder Woman, like any of these power goddesses had me at hello. Like that is like, I'm going to be her. You, I want you know, to be that powerful. Everybody talked about Linda Carter being like this beautiful, like, you know, whatever, and kind of, kind of sexualize it. I never saw it that way. I just thought she was like really cool. And then people are like, you know, we need more women like this. Like, Linda freaking Carter, 1976, and get it together, everybody, right? Like, yes. it, it was Charlie's right there. Charlie's Angels, too. Charlie's Angels. I was a fan. Come on, of course you did. I can see you in feathered hair, just to let you know. You, no, you, you. kind of got I a little- feathered hair for a while. Don't take this the wrong way. You got a little Susie Quattro thing going on. Oh, I okay. can totally see you doing that. You know Susie Quattro, right? Of course. Of course you do. You're a musician, too. Um, I can't, I can't, I can't keep straight of anything. What's your favorite sport? What will you watch? Uh, I enjoy a little bit of golf. Uh, and I actually was a softball player. I was an all-star softball player in my teens. Pitcher, first base, catcher. Uh, but first base was sort of my thing. Um, yeah, what would I watch? I'm not a, a sports watcher these days, I have to say. But I do love, I, I've recently taken up swimming. And I've become a little obsessed with it. It's just so incredible. So I do watch that. But yeah, I'm not a... But so like personal sorry. performance stuff you like. The team You're stuff a sports guy. Like. I'm assuming that that's why you would ask that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of that vibe of like, you know, watching people be a peak performance. That's your work. You help people find their peak performance. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, would I mean, I watch... I would love a little... I like watching gymnastics. But I pretty much... Um, personal performance. I would love... Yeah, I love golf. It's uh, here. Here's another question for you. Very zen for me. Um, favorite musician of all time. You get their entire catalog. You're on a deserted island. Not quite the island you're on, but deserted. What discography are you taking with you? Who's and I only get one. That's you're asking someone who's married to <laughs> a musician and and live in the music world. Oh, uh, listen. I'll let you off the hook. It's not anything that your husband has done or has been attached to. So you don't have to show any favoritism there. You're I'm personally. not. Um, I would have to probably go with, uh, they're so diverse, but ready? Rush or Earth, Wind and Fire? Really? See, yeah. I love that answer. First of all, you're the, you're the woman that would show up at a Rush concert. You ever wanted to, back in the day, the joke was, you know, if you ever wanted to impress a girl, bring her to a Rush concert because there's no line for the bathroom. Earth, Wind and Fire, I mean, come on. 
Well, you here's someone, they're my inspiration for the elements. They were larger than life. Those outfits, those album covers, those lyrics. I literally was like, who are they? Earth, wind, fire. Of course I'd grow up and my entire existence is based on the love of elements. And, and I always had an affinity for Carl Anderson because he was in Jesus Christ Superstar. Like I just always, you know, I like absolutely went down that that rabbit hole with him, like no matter what he did. And he had quite a prolific career outside of Earth, Wind and Fire. Like it was, he almost did better outside of the band, which is which was kind of tough during that time. But it was, it was um. Yeah, I can totally see that. The other thing about Rush, um, too, did you know that they're actually working on putting together all the kibbles and bits from all the other all the other sessions that they never pieced together? And uh, Getty Lee's basically like, yeah, I think we need to do this. No, like, you know, I have crazy? to throw in Beatles because I'd be remiss if I didn't say. Oh, Beatles. So you get one. And you, you just said Paul. Three. Yeah. Well, you break every rule. I like how you work. Yeah, I had to go with the trifecta energy. All right, fair enough. Maybe I should maybe I should phrase it with the with the trifecta. So between the Beatles, which by the way, let's go, you know, all 12 albums, with Rush, let's go with all 16 albums. And then with Earth, Wind, and Fire, they only had, I think, six or seven albums though. But they were highly influential. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, listen, I think that's five good minutes. We got to know you in a whole different way. Did you enjoy that? I did, but now I'm stumped because I have so many spiritual ahas that not one sat there like that is the one. Well, but here's well, here's your last question. Has saved my butt so many times in life that it's like there has got to be a god in this world because how could I have lived through that? So I'm more thinking about the awestruck moments where things as growing up that I didn't do that I should have done that I was protected from. Well, so he, well, here's your. Here's a great final question for this okay. five good minutes. Are you ready? I'm ready. How do you want people to, reben you, to remember you after they meet you? Mm, she's truly representing the divine that living here and living with purpose is the way to be with love and kindness and generosity. I love that. Well, listen, I want to thank you for being part of Stream of Consciousness. Did you it's love that one? Did you like that one? I love it. that one. I okay. love that answer. Come on. It's truth. Come on. I really come from the heart and I just, you know, want to see people all thrive in the world. And, you know, when you get really good at that, this, this is one thing that I've learned by hitting the road and getting out there and meeting people. I, I was stuck in that parochial thing of I'm going to get ahead of the person that's two doors over. Like I'm going to do it better than they do. And it's this kind of incestuous, like competitive, like, Oh, that medium's this and blah, blah, blah. And you, and you hear it a lot in this work. And there's a lot of ego and all that crap. The thing that I've really learned in doing all this traveling is how many authentic people, I know how to identify an authentic person as soon as I meet them. Mm. That is the thing that I thought of when I met you. You're authentic. You're the real deal. You really care. You got business savvy. Nothing wrong with that. That just speaks to the idea that your path is so important that you're going to take care of the mundane details as well. Mm. Right? Yeah. Thank you. I really mean, I really appreciate that. I appreciate this. What a great uh, podcast. What a great interviewer. And I know you have a great audience. So thank you to everyone who uh, stuck this out and enjoyed it while you were here. <laughs> and listen, I can't wait to be on your radio show. Click on the link below to hear all of that. I'm going to be a guest there next week. If you catch it live, great. If you want to catch the repeats, all, all the news will be out there. Um, listen, Lainey Savante, I'm going to give you the heart tap. And by the way, this is your opportunity. Who do you want to give your heart tap out to? What a heart tap is, is to send it out to the people that you love and care about or a group or whoever. Who would you like to send your heart tap out to? I'm going to send it to my husband and to my mother, my husband, Merlin, who is a complete inspiration to all I do. Great supporter. And to my mom, who taught me that more than three, leave it be, has actually been my destiny. And I've never said that before or rhymed. It just happened. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Well, we're going to give the hard tap out to Merlin and your mother and to remind everybody that we love and care for one another and just simply keep going. Mm. All right, Lainey, Savante, thank you so much for being part of my journey and a part of our path. Thank you. See you soon. We'll see, see you, you guys soon.